Hey guys, welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's Amazing Space Colony Simulator Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and we are playing on Twitchy's Tremendous Trojans, where we are actually in the middle of getting over the apocalypse that happened from all our natural gas geysers going dormant at the same time. Atmospheric suit checkpoints had to get shut down, people got sent into hot areas, and thus are very, very wounded. But things are starting to whir back up now, and we are starting to get everything back on top. We do have have a few issues like the water started to back up which means the toilets aren't necessarily always available but these are all things that we can get over now that gases flow liquids flow and of course the power slowly but surely is returning to the base there are two pressing thoughts on my brain right at this moment, present moment in time one why have we got space yet what's going on why is everything conspiring to make it so difficult and two i really need to get some sort of backup power system on the go and to that end we're going to go down we're going to make that oil well work but first i'd like to draw your attention to this bottom gas generator here for some reason it is getting a big overheat as you can see there is many many degrees are going into it and for some reason they are starting to overheat this is not a problem that we've had at any point in the whole of the lifetime of this base but now suddenly we do i'm not sure exactly what to do about it so we're going to go across over back to the oil well down here try and get this working of course we need to get some water down there there's one of the uh, one of the requirements to get the oil being pumped out uh whilst i think long and hard about how i'm actually going to solve the overheating issue the rerouting of the water from the hot cold tank to the bottom left uh, left us with a lot of pipe that was no longer necessary so i'm also going to take those out and checking my gas situations it's not actually as good as i would like but it's good enough there is gas flowing so the atmospheric suits can be uh, used putting down a bottle opener because there is a whole bunch of stuff at the top there that i need to empty out there are both uh, crude oil and petroleum the petroleum that we uh, pick up from down here is actually going to go into that holding tank that ZTech is working on but we're going to then feed that into a, a generator the overheat also getting pretty bad here uh, and I'm not sure, as I say, entirely what to do about it. I'm starting to have little thoughts about maybe making the tile underneath the water output solid so that the water will kind of hang around there, take a little bit of the heat down before it gets dribbled away. That, that would be great. Also going to tidy up the uh, ladders quickly. I think I'm eventually going to end up having a little bit of a situation where I need to change the automation in there as well. But my first and biggest thought about how we're going to deal with the overheating situation is to make a bigger room. Uh, we're just going to come over to the left hand side here and we're going to make a double the number of generators and we're going to give them a little bit more space in between. So hopefully the whole uh, convection can kick in and we can do some like atmospheric cooling to make it all work. The jobs down below have been hanging around for long enough that I'm a little worried that they're glitched out. You can see a couple of them have got uh, available errands blank, which always makes me worry, but sometimes that actually means they're just part of another package of orders and they're coming along in that section there. Okay, we need to figure out what we're going to do with all the uh, waste products of the generators in here, but thankfully we do have the vast majority of the infrastructure already set up on the right-hand side. We just need to wire some wires around uh, as simple as that, and we've got the uh, gas planned out on how to flow in but on flowing out liquids i have a little bit of an issue with this double pipe system here so i'm going to put down a couple of bridges so that i can actually flow the pipe out underneath them i think that's probably the best way of doing it i was trying to think if there was some sort of like clever way of jumping two pipes but you know whatever these jobs down below finally taken long enough for me to go no no we need to reset their priorities make sure that they are actually a job that is being dealt with because getting the oil down below as i say quite important for making sure that our power is much more sustainable and not so open to uh devastation caused by the natural gas geysers getting in sync or anything like that okay we had a bit of a problem where this filter was overheating and because it was made out of copper that was happening relatively quickly uh, i've got people in there to replace it with the gold because you know what that is our only working natural gas geyser and we could really do with that omelet from the printer because that's all i'm ever going to get is a bit of food and we're going to start putting down some orders up the top here because i super want to make sure my telescope is at least uh, protected so that when it becomes uh, actually necessary uh, to be functional we can actually make it work and not destroy it every time a new meteor comes along we hooked up the water to the uh, the 
electrolyzer up top because it turned out we had not done that. Just queuing up a few random pieces of research, like miniature valves and stuff like that. Things that we should have done by now, but we haven't because we were concentrating on other things. I thought we'd solved the toilet issue, but the rolling brownouts have today decided to strike the water and hygiene systems, which makes it a little bit awkward when the duplicates need to deal with their daily needs, you know? Uh, and up the top there, just quickly working on the power system for the new water filtration, uh, because, you know, dealing with wastewater is a high priority job in my world. And speaking of high priority jobs, there was uh, one over there that people couldn't actually reach, so we needed to make sure that was good. ZTEC's actually looking a little bit beat up there. I didn't realize at the time, but uh, that never fear by the end of today's episode we will go around and make sure everybody is 100% health again okay the filtering system for the crude oil is in place and we're just waiting for them to put the iron down there for the uh, power system so that we can get some uh, the, get the pump working and get the oil flowing and here comes ZTech my man despite the fact that he is uh, injured he is always reporting for duty and doing the work that needs to be doing okay so the crude oil gets taken out but there is nowhere for the petroleum to flow it was a small mistake that I made and that was something that we're going to have to deal with just by putting a little bit of a tube in but it's going to take some time to get there. Uh, the problem that we've got at the moment is the fact that I've got one set of jobs up halfway up the ladder and one set of jobs all the way down the ladder uh, so my duplicates are taking a little bit of time to get back and forth even though we've got the highly efficient super super high tech uh, pneumatic air tubes to move our guys around it still takes a little bit of time to move and do things. Okay so they're getting the uh, access ways set in for the water pump so that we will never run out of crude oil fingers crossed and now I'm just watching the flow happen and making sure it is going where I want it to go uh, one of the main problems that I've got immediately looking at it is the fact that the oil is flowing past the plastic making oil refinery uh, and that is getting priority and I kind of wanted the power to have priority I later go back and swap this back because it turns out it doesn't actually matter once the oil one has got saturated it all just flows past it anyway so you know it didn't really matter but I just kind of wanted to express my feelings there going for the last piece of the medical equipment uh, honestly I'm probably not even going to put it down because we've got a far more than suitable med bay up and working already and hopefully this is where our power systems start to catch up with ourselves but we do have a bit of a situation down below where the duplicates need to come down and turn the cranks to get the oil flowing up towards the petroleum generators which then in turn power the pumps which then send the oil to the refineries and there's kind of like this two stage lag behind so as long as there's a little bit of power in the system it can keep up and we're just waiting for a, the petroleum to produce just a little bit more power than it takes to make that power and we'll start building up a little bit of charge in the batteries unfortunately as I say the bottleneck here is the duplicates going down and doing the refining process I suddenly understand why so many people are all about how to do a uh, duplicate free refining process trying to like warm up the oil with lava or whatever something like that because it actually is a super good idea I didn't actually realize what we're doing the uh, highest priority on here I think maybe the filter was built out of the wrong material yeah the filter may have actually been built out of copper or iron rather than out of gold and of course it's quite hot down below so we need to make sure that we can make things out of appropriate materials and in fact we're getting to the point where gold amalgam is probably not the appropriate material anymore we are uh, steel using species and we should actually start using that steel uh, unfortunately we are super running out of a line uh, and to do that we need uh, a whole bunch of eggshells and stuff like that and our breeding programs are um a little lax shall we say a little lax checking out the condition of the small generator room i noticed there is a bit of a problem when we're still building up some back gases there or that are not being cleared out because the detection system is only looking for oxygen again maybe something we should work on at some point i'm now looking at the steam generator and going hmm maybe we need to start using this i'm wondering whether we can put it on top of our cold steam gas geyser and maybe that will be uh, a good one there going around and selecting all the eggshells that i could find and telling people to sweep them because obviously the sweep takes them into the crusher and then in the crusher the eggshells get turned into lime we can also do it with fossil i believe so that's something to keep an eye on if we find any fossil that will be cool i don't know if fossil is a renewable material or if there's any better uses for it if anybody knows anything about fossil uh, let me know i will go and look it up on the wiki but at the same time the wiki's not 
the most updated thing in the world. So maybe it's not got some finer details that players out there actually know about. And, uh, you know, any information passed amongst friends is always good, right? Setting the bottle opener to empty out all these bottles of petroleum up top. Hopefully they all drip down, get sucked up by the pump and put into this nice little tank that I've got on the right hand side. And somehow I will figure out the plumbing that takes the petroleum from that tank up to the petroleum generators up there. Because let's be honest, the only thing we're ever actually going to want the petroleum for is for making power. I don't think there's any other uses other than obviously making a little bit of plastic. But we've got our plastic being made. We might one day need to have a larger plastic making facility, but today is not that day. One duplicate going around and doing all the work there. I believe it's Shadow. It's a little bit hard to read the writing from this distance. But we have a little bit of a situation where the pump is not quite producing enough oil for the five different refineries that we have. I might have to actually sit down and work out some numbers, figure out exactly uh, how much a refinery can use and uh, how much a pump can provide. This stables here is uh, a bit of a, a bit of a mess. We've got a bit of an overcrowding issue on the go. I'm not entirely sure how to fix it. I'm thinking that maybe I'm going to actually put the morbs underneath a mesh floor, keep them separate from the puffs so the puffs can have a nice wide open area, whereas the morbs, I don't mind if they're overcrowded because they're just producing uh, polluted oxygen. I, I think that's the plan anyway. Over here at the cold water tank, things are going well. I'm just waiting for all the waters to be put through and processed. And the uh, collection of skill points we are starting to build up now is getting uh, quite prestigious. I've not seen anybody with uh, so many skill points saved up. But of course, we are at the point where because all our power died, we can't really push forward with anybody's skills because they will want too much from life. Uh, and we can't provide that, then they'll become very, very depressed uh, because, you know, there's nothing quite like a duplicate who wants a few things in life and doesn't quite get it for being depressed. Uh, and that's that's something we want to avoid. Uh, depressed workforce does not actually do the work you put down for them. So that's something we want to try and bear in mind. The left-hand side over here, we are finally getting down to the big bulk building of the power generation room, getting all of the uh, tiles put in. I'm not sure if you guys have actually noticed that not really allowed for a door on this set of plans so at some point it will occur to me that actually we need to let duplicates walk in and out of this room if we want them to build stuff uh, so that that'll happen soon more automation going in as i said uh, last time i actually need to set that gas sensor in the uh the power generator room on this side to be if it is not carbon dioxide start pumping uh, it used to be if it was oxygen pump out because we thought that was the only gas that would uh, leak in there from the corridor outside but it turns out no natural gas will also leak in so if it's not carbon dioxide get it on out of there carbon dioxide will be dealt with thankfully the door situation has suddenly presented itself to me so that's a nice and simple one to fix there but the one that i'm not overly sure is how we're going to lead the power up to this area it's nice having the heavy watt wires for maximum conductivity uh, but after there i mean how do we get outside of the building obviously we need to use the um conjoining plate but do we want to then connect it up to the main line do we want to have a little branch line coming off for itself these are all uh, all situations that i need to think about uh, i've no started noticing that we're building up quite a bit of steam down the bottom here the liquid pipe that we're using to bring a little bit of water down for the oil well seems to be leaking water and then that's turning into steam because it's so hot down here not sure exactly what's going on but we have actually finally built enough steel or produced enough steel to get the steam generator on top of a my guys are over here so this should be interesting i'm not sure exactly what needs to be done for this. this is the first time i've ever put one of these down so it's going to be interesting to see what what's what's wrong basically we all know that this is not going to work uh, we have to figure out why that's but that's pretty much the, the the method of gameplay that i have for auction not included i go right this item here i feel like it should work this way and then we go ahead and we build that stuff like up like that and then when i have built that we go okay it's not working and i can see why we need to do this all right it's not working and i can't see why let's go to the wiki and find out <laughs> I, I feel like it leads to a very interesting, if messy, looking base. But, uh, you know, I'm far, fine with having a messy looking base. This is one thing that I really do not bother, uh, do not uh, mind about at all. I like having little areas of high beauty, whether they're artificial areas that I've created myself using the paintings and the tiles and stuff like that, or if there's a small little area of natural resource uh, underneath the generators, we have this little area that are little pockets of uh, primordial atmosphere and 
terrain. I like to leave those just kind of lying around. They, they kind of act as areas of high beauty for me. We're going to have a few inside the base, but mostly we're going to be wa uh, working our way through the entire content of this asteroid and turning it all into man-made materials, duplicate-made materials. Uh, so it's, it's nice to have a few things laying around. I'm not sure whether we're actually going to be able to get to that before the next update drops, the full release, in fact. Uh, that should actually probably, by the time you're watching this video, already be out, which will be a very interesting situation to be in. I really want to get these guys to space before the full update drops down, uh, at which point I'll be like, okay, we did this base, we made it to space, let's uh, let's go and make uh, another version, because, you know, that's, that's what we do here. Anyway, enough future planning, let's talk about the wiring that is going down here. I've got this little uh, generator, not generator, a transformer down below here. This was trying to pick up water, or uh, rather was providing the power for the pump that was going to pick up water. All that water stopped being picked up now, so we can totally get rid of that and use it as a throughput for our one of our major trunk ways of power. You can see we've got the main one that is going up and down the corridor. Turns out we're going to have one going horizontally across this way because there are a few things that we need to hook up from the generators to the steam generators. I suppose that's all generators, but that's pretty cool. I'm down with that. I'm really hoping uh, that we can uh, get some serious cooling on the, on the go with this. It'll be really nice to have this cooling down water and then maybe using that water to go and cool the other water down or something like that. Maybe having a, a, a self-feeding back back propagating cold system. That would be great. Not entirely sure if that is how it's going to work. Okay, we've got some two symbols underneath there and I'm not taking the time to have a look and see what they are. Don't ask me why. I've obviously decided that other jobs are far more important. Alright, the two symbols we are missing some building and then there is a little thermometer gauge. What does that mean? The steam te temperature is below 125 degrees and to which I'm like, oh no. Oh no, this is a cool steam geyser. Does it actually produce anything over 125 degrees? To which my answer would be no. So we probably put this totally in the wrong place. We need to move this somewhere else and then use like some sort of cooling, uh, heating loop rather, to cool down some water, heat up the steam underneath. So, uh, yeah, interesting. Well, we're going to use this situation to our advantage. We've uh, managed to pull all the duplicates over this way, so we're going to go on a little bit of a mining expedition, get all the iron ore done. So we're still going to have this power situation going down because somewhere out that way, we will have a situation where we can take the water from the cold water tank, push it through a heating system to heat up some water for the steam generator. On the other hand, this whole situation has given me the opportunity to put the layer of insulated tiles all the way around the geyser like I wanted to. Okay, so we're having problems with the heavy watt wire because we are running out of materials. So we just need to go around and uh, queue a few more of those up. I had a quick moment of looking at the uh, super high tech um, medical uh, facilities there and decided that, no, you know what, my med babe, it's good enough. I'm sure we would save some time, maybe uh, cycle through a few more duplicates when they get ill. The thing is, my duplicates very rarely actually get ill at this point. They get injured, they get burned, they get scolded, they go off into areas where they shouldn't do and get physically damaged, but that doesn't mean that they are ill. They haven't caught any disease or anything like that, so the, the, the back to tank slash medical chamber isn't needed. The triage cot is, which, you know, that's that's all right. We can live with that. Generator room is definitely a fast on the approach of becoming a, a working area. You can see all the wires have been put in and the tubes as well. Tube being pipes and any gas vents that we need. So with the tiles all the way around, on the outside. I need to really think about what we're going to do with that steam vent. Unfortunately, that's not going to be something that we get to uh, in this episode, but it's something that I need to put my brain power behind. You can see that we've got the hot biome. I mean, it is just below the screen at the moment, but we've got the hot biome right next to the steam generator, so a uh, steam geyser, sorry. So we might actually use that area to make a heating chamber, and then in there we can use the thermo aqua tuner. Is that what it's called? It's the one that takes in water in one side pumps out a load of heat into the liquid it's immersed in and then produces cold water on the other side. Uh, if we do that, I think we can have another cooling loop on the hot cold tank below and that will then produce steam for the steam generator and also cool down the big tank a bit faster. That would be cool. Okay, so that generator up top we are replacing. Uh, it turns out that all I need to do really is just replace the generators the moment they start complaining that they are taking damage. Zedtech getting himself a little bit stuck there, but that's just because falling material has fallen behind him. Uh, thankfully, the game does tell you when people are idle, and almost always in my game when people are idle is because they've got stuck. Uh, very rarely have, do I have a situation where people actually just don't know what to do. It does happen sometimes that I will over-specialize a duplicate like 
maybe another three would only be set up to be a chef and I like, would remember that maybe I should like let him have some farming abilities and maybe the ability to run around and deliver stuff. The problem is the moment that I give anybody any sort of delivery responsibilities, that's going to take up their entire list of priorities, whether they need to do some cooking or not, because there is a lot of a lot of uh, jobs around here that are super high priority. Now, these are my own own mistakes that have led me down here. I've always been like, this job needs to do and pump it up. This job needs to do and pump it up. And it turns out that, once again, because we start at priority five, I, again, a, a decision that I'm not overly sure why Clay have done this, but because we start at priority five, it means we uh, very quickly climb our way up to priority nine, and then we have nowhere else to go other than setting red alert for jobs that really want to get done right in front of my camera right then. Uh, you may have noticed that my bristle blossoms are actually cool enough to be producing food. This is good. This is actually like a, a very strong indication that my base is returning back to normal. Uh, we were having a serious cooling issues because we were having to pump hot water into my base because everybody was dying from the lack of liquids. Uh, we now have segregated water from inside and outside of the base and we're using the hot liquids outside of the base and we're just using recycled water inside the base because it turns out that's cooler. Recycled water, good for the environment okay for you. And the last set of orders we've just done to quickly slap down here are dealing with the waste gases in this particular area. Obviously you can see there is a whole lot of polluted oxygen in there. We need to get that, get that out of there so that we can start dealing with just the carbon dioxide. I'm even possibly going to use this pump to send the waste gases to the same waste gas system that we have for the power situation on the left over there, on the right, sorry, over there. At some point we will have to go around the outside of the map and have a waste system put installed, having a gas vent going all around the outside, a gas pipe going all around the outside, and also a water pipe going all around the outside. So just pick up any waste that happens and we'll send it to a processing facility to separate them all out into individual areas and then process them as is appropriate. But it looks like we have done everything we needed to do here, so I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next time. We're going to try and sort out that steam generator and really hoping that we can actually get enough steel together to make the rocket and get ourselves into space. But I'll see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!